The NSA have released Ghidra. That's right, it might be spelled G-H-I-D-R-A, but it's pronounced Ghidra. Ghidra is, is this the game changer? Is this the reverse engine tool we've been waiting for? Is this the thing we're going to be all using to pull apart malware? Does that mean anybody can pull apart malware? Am I out of a job? What's going on? What is Ghidra? If you want to know more and first blush with this tool, stay tuned till after this. Okay, so this is by no mean an in-depth tutorial. Um, I'm normally a user of IDA with Hexrays. I like to use that product to reverse engineer my executables and DLLs and find out what the deal is. But Ghidra has been released by the NSA. What are some of the advantages? It's a lot cheaper. Buying IDA with Hexrays and IDA Pro can set you back ten dollars to $20,000 USD a year. This product is free. This product is out from the NSA. What is one of the better things about this product is it's going to be open source eventually and people are going to be able to contribute to this all around the world. Now what's even better is that somebody's already gotten hold of this, they've started playing with it and using its own debugger found flaws in the Jira product. So therefore when it's open source they can go and fix those flaws. So this is going to become one of the best decompilers out there in time because the community will get behind it and start making fixes for it. So if you go to the ghidra-sre.org website, you can find all the links you need there to download the product. From there, you can get to the installation guide. And this is a very thorough installation guide. It looks quite small on the face of it, but there's not a lot to know. Good thing about this particular product is once you're actually in it, there's actually a great cheat sheet online on what you can do and key presses and things like that. So this product has been well thought out. Obviously, if the NSA have been using it for a while and pulling apart malware, then obviously they've well thought it out. So let's actually have a look at this product, shall we? So, sorry about all the mess here, but these are all the downloads and bits and pieces I've so far gathered about Ghidra. First thing is install the GDK 11. If you don't have the Java development kit, this will not run. It runs on Java. Um, from there, of course, you can run the product. Now, it comes down as a zip file. If you download the GitHub zip at the moment, it's just got the readme's in it. The open source code is not up there yet. But you download the zip file and unzip it. Believe it or not, you don't install it. If you want to uninstall this, just delete these files. There's no registry editing, no nothing. It's just standalone files. To run this is a batch file. Feels rather 1980s there, but that's the way it works. So we run the batch file and up comes Ghidra. Up it comes after, of course, a black screen. This episode of Mickey J. White Hat brought to you by the Virus Doctor. Be sure to go and check him out. Ken Dwight, master of mystery here, unravels the mysteries. He brings to light all the ways you can conquer malware. He takes you through some easy steps. Those easy steps help you conquer malware quickly. So go to the website, The Virus Doctor. Check it out today. And if you use special coupon code MickeyJ15, you will get 15% off the course you choose. Thanks very much to The Virus Doctor for sponsoring this episode. Okay, one of the painful things you will have to get used to, or you can turn it off, is the annoying little dragon head that pops up throughout this program. Obviously, it's their logo, their logo of choice. Now, here we have Ghidra, and from here on, I'm thinking about IDA and Hexrays, product I used often. Now, this product will work on Windows, Mac, and Linux. Um, it's a very good little tool, so let's dig into it, shall we? We're going to start a new project. This is uh, live, by the way. I'm not uh, going to cut and shut this particular video. So what we have here is you can choose to have a shared or a non-shared project. Really good if you're working on some malware with some partners. I'm not going to share this. Okay, I'm just going to create a test directory and a project test where I'm going to keep my executables or things I'm going to pull apart. And here we go. I'm now going to add something to this. And the easiest way I've found to do that is a drag and drop. 
So I've gone and found an executable on my hard drive and I'm just going to drag and drop that in and it's going to load it up for me. So here we go, it's importing the file as we speak. While this is going about doing this, it's going to ask me to check some things about it. First of all, it's detected it's a P header x86. It knows a bit about this file. So let's bring it into our project and have a look at it. So here are the import summaries telling us roughly what it's found and what it's bringing in and what it's connected to. And at the moment, it looks pretty boring. Not much going on here. What we do from here is right click open with. What are we going to do with it? Let's start with some code browser. Some browsing of the code, hey? Find out what this executable looks like. All right, so what's just happened is the code browser has opened up to the full size of my rather wide screen, so you can't see it. I'm going to resize that so you can see it in a moment. However, it's asking me a question, would I like to analyze this file? Yes, I would like to analyze this file. Um, I'm gonna, yeah, let's just find out everything you can find out, shall we? Go ahead and analyze. And here we have the code coming up on the screen. I'm now gonna just try and resize that so you guys can see what's going on here. Alrighty. All right. Now, what we've got here, it looks very similar to IDA. At the moment, I can see um, all the assembly code. Um, I've got oh, headers. Uh, text that's so broken down the PE header that's rather cool actually um, you can see all the files it's importing you can see its entry point you can jump around quite quickly in the assembly um, it looks very similar to IDA behaves very similar to IDA so far it just feels like I've saved myself a ton of money and we've got some pop-ups here we've got all kinds of things going on here um, which is pretty cool and we got some warnings during analysis there we go i'm not really analyzing this file so at the moment not too concerned we got some functions here we go all sorts of functions in there and heaps and all kinds of things i'd be curious to see how the graphing tool is that what that is let's have a look graphing function mm, is performing graph layout with an hourglass have I asked it to do something you can't do? Oh, there we go. Look at this. So you can see all the relationships between the different functions. That's pretty cool. That's very similar to IDA. It's not quite maybe as good as IDA. However, don't forget, I just saved myself $10,000, $20,000. Got a free tool to do what you can't normally do with just anything. You've got to have the right software. So that's pretty cool. What else have we got here? All right, so obviously, if we don't all understand assembly, we've got some pops and things going on here, and some jumps and things, but what does it all mean? Is there an easy way to find out what's going on? Now, in IDA, of course, you've got hex rays, and you can pull that up, and you can decompile into C code, and then you can go through your C code. Well, guess what this has got right here? The compiler, and look what we've got right here side-by-side -side comparison of the function we're in and of course it's decompiled into C code and I've got a good authority from talking to others this code's pretty accurate so you can go through this code and figure out what that assembly language is doing now it's a bit of a, a messy clunky uh, interface feels a little like an old accounting package from the early or mid 90s but it's functional so off the bat, let me just answer that first question I really had. Is this a game changer? Well, it gives a tool to people who couldn't previously afford a tool like this. It gives it to them for free. So that is kind of a game changer. However, as you can see, you need to understand C programming um, assembly a little bit. You have to understand how executables are stacked together. You need to know a little bit. So you're not going to get your average person jumping in and playing with this. You're going to get people who previously couldn't afford IDA playing a little bit more and learning a little bit more. 
but really you still have to have a coding back end background. Um, is this going to make malware easier to write? No, no, they've already got their tools all sorted out. This is, this is about pulling apart things and debugging and playing with things. I don't think it's going to affect a lot of the industry. It's just going to give some tools to the right people. The average Joe Blow that downloads this and starts playing with it, I think they're going to get bored with it pretty quick or confused or lost, even with all the help files. And by the way, the help files are excellent. Now, just a few things I've discovered along the way is this does pull apart PE headers and things like that, which is IDA doesn't do that. It's, it's you got to use a second tool for that. It's not easy to use, um, but it is, I guess you can get around it quite easy and, and it's very similar to IDA in the way the interface works. Um, side by side, assembly with C. Uh, as I click through the C code, it shows me where the assembly reflection is or where the data is that's based on that decryption. Oh, sorry, I should say on that uh, decompilation. Um, but still, it's not going to make it easy for those that un don't understand C. Um, in this product, product, you can rename the variables. So that is pretty cool. You rename one variable here and it renames it everywhere else. So you can start to make this C language actually start to make some sense. Um, it's got a lot of guides and help stuff in here, which is great. It's got an undo button should you make a mistake that's pretty cool um, and you can collaborate with other people working on the same piece of malware or whatever it might be which is also very a very very cool little thing um, you can insert comments so let's say I work out what this parameter actually does I give it a nice name it flows through the document but I actually want to comment on it I can put comments in here <coughs> Um, having the graphing tool so I can see what the functions do and zoom in on any function. Um, that's pretty cool as well. I do like that. That is a part of IDA as well. Looks almost identical to IDA in fact. I, I happen to know from some of the other stuff that I've seen around is you can actually run your own scripts in here. It's got a script library. Um, it does use Python scripts, so it's another language you've got to kind of muck around with. Um, I can't see a debugger in here as such, but this is the first blush. This is the first time I've actually opened this product up. So I've not planned anything and I've just picked a random Windows file to show you. So this really is happening as it's happening right in front of you. Um, there is an API, so you can plug your own stuff into this. It is a Java code-based API, so you need to learn a bit of Java. So at this point in time, you're learning Java, you're learning Python, you're learning to read C or a bit of assembly. I don't think that makes it a game changer. As I mentioned, the help in this is really cool. Um, you can click into functions and find out what things are doing, which is really cool, very similar to IDA. Um, you can open up and look into Windows resource files. You can't do that, I believe, with IDA. Um, IDA, the disassembler, has, has a really good debug interface. Um, this one, I guess, once it goes open source and people play with it, they're going to plug one in. Um, and you've also, I believe, there's a function call graph in here somewhere too. So really all I'm doing with this video is showing you that interface, letting you have a bit of a look at it, see what you think. Um, I'm not really going to dig too deep into this. Um, this is first blush, so oh, here we go, here's a script manager. So I'm finding out stuff as I click it right now. I might have a bit more of a play with it and find out what it can and cannot do. But as a disassembler, it does the job and it's free. So thank you, NSA. There's probably not too many people out there that necessarily want to thank a government agency, but thank you. I, I reckon this is uh, going a great way to enabling the next level of people wanting to pull apart malware. Um, and here we go, we can search for strings and patterns and actually I'm starting to like this. It's probably got a lot more in it than IDA. It's missing a few things. Um, but I think what I'll do is the next DLL file or XE file or SCR file I get that's a virus, I might use this to pull it apart and compare it to what I can do in IDA. But this is quite a cool tool. So again, thanks to the NSA for releasing it. Is it a game changer? I don't know. I think it might be for those that have got a keen interest in pulling apart malware, but the average Joe Blow is going to get confused, probably get horribly, horribly confused, I would suggest. Um, not much more confused than using IDA, but still confused nonetheless. Anyway, thank you for this quick introduction. This is like day two release for this product. 
So nobody knows too much about it just yet. A Wikipedia entry has just appeared on it. Um, I do think this has got a big future in malware decoding in the future. So stay tuned. Let's see where this goes.